Welcome to the Audacity to Podcast, episode 86, Audacity 2.0.1, update, and Apple's podcast app for iOS. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Audacity to Podcast. I'm Daniel J. Lewis, and this is a how-to podcast about podcasting and using Audacity. It's where I give you the guts and teach you the tools to podcast with passion, organization, and dialogue. And today I'm going to talk to you about a couple new tools that have come out that we as podcasters should be aware of, and especially if you're using Audacity, because I'm going to tell you about the Audacity 2.0.1 update that just came out, as well as the new Apple Podcasts app for iOS, which is iPad, iPhone, iPod Touch, and what that means for podcasting, as well as some pros and cons and things I like and don't like about the app and some uh, interesting things to come along with that. But make sure that you check out the show notes for this episode over at theaudacitytopodcast.com slash 86, and I'll have these links and images, a couple screenshots in there, as well as these points that I mentioned will be over there, and download links and all of that stuff over at theaudacitytopodcast.com slash 86. So I use Audacity, and I do this thing where every five episodes I try to focus solely on Audacity. But it always seems that the Audacity team releases something big right after I've already recorded an Audacity-focused episode. So they're at it again. They released Audacity 2.0.1 update, minor update. But this is really good to know because previously they weren't releasing updates for an entire year. It's, it was almost exactly a year between one of the 1.3 updates, the beta versions, as they were trying to develop things. So it's really nice to see them speeding up that development cycle a little bit and releasing things a little bit more frequently. And I would call this version of Audacity the most useful update. There are some bug fixes in this and uh, some other things have been uh, fixed and improved a little bit. But there are three things that really stand out to me. And I do recommend that you go, if you use Audacity, go to the show notes, the audacity to podcast.com slash 86 and get the link to the change log for Audacity and also the download link for Audacity 2.0.1. So you can see what all is new. But three things that I think are really big, really big for this. Well, the third one is kind of, eh, kind of. But the three things that I have picked out that I think are the best are number one, keyboard shortcuts for effects and plugins. This means anything under the effects menu can now have its own keyboard shortcut. So I love this because I use the same few plugins all the time and I hate going to the effects menu, finding it, clicking on it. And it's just not convenient, too, if I have to switch from one to the other or if I'm switching files. Because if you've noticed, Audacity does remember what plugin or what effect you applied last time. So you can just say reapply this. But if you switch windows, like if you're editing multiple podcasts at a time and you switch windows, you can't reapply that effect. It doesn't consider anything there to reapply. But if you do choose that effect, it remembers the settings you used last time as long as you don't close Audacity. So it can be a bit of a burden to try and switch between windows or just use these plugins. So now you can create your own keyboard shortcut for any plugin. You know that I still use and love Chris's Dynamic Compressor. It works great for my audio. And also I frequently normalize things too. So now I can assign keyboard shortcuts to these things. Like I might make normalize on my Mac. I I might go weird and make it control option command N or something like that on my Mac. So that way I can just very quickly select my audio, press that keyboard shortcut, then press enter and it's done exactly what I wanted it to do very quickly or assign it to anything else. In fact, they say that you can assign keyboard shortcuts to anything from the generate effect, or analyze menus, not just the plugins, but you can assign keyboard shortcuts to any of the user added plugins. So anything you add to Audacity as a plugin 
can have a keyboard shortcut now. I love that. Huge, huge. I mean, that right there, that's why you should update to 2.0.1 is that right there might be a huge benefit to you if you use keyboard shortcuts. And I really do encourage you to learn keyboard shortcuts. They help a lot. The second thing that is also a really huge benefit, very similar to this and almost replaces this, maybe, is plugins can now be added to chains. That doesn't sound too exciting because maybe you aren't familiar with this concept of chains or, uh, well, I haven't covered it before because it hasn't really been useful before, but now chains are useful. If you use Photoshop, then you might be familiar with Photoshop Actions. Or if you use Microsoft products, you might be familiar with macros. Or certain other programs do the same thing. A chain is a a recipe of things that you want done to your audio. It can be effects or certain processing. Now, it just applies to whatever you have selected. So you can't program into the chain. Well, that I know. You can't program into the chain to say find this and do this. If there's this, then do that. I don't think you can do that kind of stuff on a simple level. You can't do it. I can't do it on a simple level. You could probably write some really fancy program and do it. But the, the major shortcoming in this has been that chains could only include certain things. And none of the user added plugins could be in that chain. So my editing chain, and I'll just use that terminology, uh, my workflow, I'll call it that, is I bring in my audio, I convert it to mono, I compress it, and then I do any further edits from there. Sometimes I might normalize it after that, depending on whether it's voicemail or if it's my own audio. And that's something I talked about in episode 85 is stuff I do to voicemail. All of those things could be put in a chain. So now I can create a chain and add Chris's dynamic compressor to the chain for it to apply that to my audio. Even better than this, though, than just making a chain. If you use Chris's dynamic compressor or any other plugin or effect for Audacity, does it save your settings? Or do you have to always try and remember, let's see, I put uh, 0.8 here, and I put 0.7 here, and I put 2.0 here, and I put 0.95 here. Do you remember those settings? Now, by now, if you've worked with Chris's Dynamic Compressor or many other plugins in Audacity, you probably have these things memorized, or maybe you have a screenshot you keep referring to. Well, now, with the Chains option, you can insert your plugin that you like to use into a chain And you can set those options. And it's not some weird way of you have to figure out what the variable is and what the value should be. No, you just double click the effect that you want to add, click the edit parameters button. This is in Audacity. And then it loads up the effect window. So you can enter that you want 0.08 here, you want 0.07 here, you want 0.2 here, whatever that you want. Then click OK. And it saves those settings that you applied. So then Anytime in the future, you can go back and reapply that chain to your audio. So this means even better than making a keyboard shortcut for Chris's dynamic compressor, this means I can save my preferred settings for Chris's dynamic compressor. So I can have a voicemail setting and I can have a studio recording setting, or I could have a Skype setting, or I could have a, a, a music setting. All of these, I could set them up however I want them to be different from each other and apply them as chains. Now, unfortunately, chains can't have keyboard shortcuts yet. Yet. I hope they do that next. But still, it's so much easier and quicker to do this. So even, let's just say, for example, for some reason... You wanted to apply Chris's dynamic compressor, then normalize it, then do an echo, then um, you wanted to turn it into a, uh, turn a stereo file into a mono or any of these things in any of those orders. Then you could put all of that into a single chain, select your audio, run that chain, and just let it go. And it would do all of those steps for you. It might pause along the way depending on the effect or what kind of input the effect might need, but it would do all of this stuff for you as part of the chain. This is really nice, really handy. I will be using it from now on and more than just the keyboard shortcuts. 
And then the third major thing, which might not be too important to you, is that now the Paul Stretch effect is officially part of Audacity. You may remember a while back I played on April 1st some audio. This. Sounds very beautiful, atmospheric, kind of calming a little bit. Very nice to listen to. Very pleasant. Welcome to Midnight Radio with Daniel J. Lewis. That song is actually, I'm sorry, it's a Justin Bieber song. And it's slowed down 800%. You may remember this from a while back that someone had run a song from Justin Bieber through this program and slowed it down 800% or eight times slower and played it back. And it sounds so much nicer because you can't tell it's Justin Bieber. And really, it is, it is quite pretty sounding. Well, that was a standalone plugin or a standalone program for running those effects. And in fact, the program had a whole bunch of options to it that made it kind of confusing. Well, now it's officially part of Audacity. So if you want to take a song and slow it down 800%, you can now do that and get much, much better results than if you were using any of the other slowing down plugins that are in Audacity. But you can also do other things with this. Maybe there's other, there are other things that you need to slow down for one reason or the other, that this can help you do it in a much higher quality way. So that's the pulse stretch effect is now a part of Audacity 2.0.1. And there are a bunch of other things that they've listed, a couple bugs they've squashed, and some of these things may or may not affect you. If you are a Mac user and concerned about accessibility, if you're visually impaired and working with Audacity, well, Audacity now has much better compatibility with the voiceover screen reader built into OS X. So it's much more accessible for visually impaired people to be able to uh, use Audacity. And uh, as well for Windows, they've made some improvements, not with this version, but they have made some improvements in the past. And they've squashed a few little bugs here and there. Only one of the bugs they've mentioned have I actually run into. So check out the show notes over at theaudacitypodcast.com slash 86, and you can get the full change log to see what's different between Audacity 2.0.0 and 2.0.1 and why you should upgrade. And I really think you should upgrade, especially if you're using version 1.3 and especially if you're using 1.2. Upgrade to 2.0. And it's more compatible with the newer systems, much more stable too. One of the crashes that I'd originally complained about with Audacity 2.0, which I could never reproduce after that one day of having those problems, I could never do it again. But that is listed in here as something they fixed. So that's fantastic. So check it out. Let me know what you think about Audacity 2.0.1. You can comment in the show notes over at theaudacitypodcast.com slash 86. Now, the next thing that is really big, and please, if you hate Apple, if you don't have an iPod or anything Apple, please do not tune out because this is important for podcasters as well, regardless of your opinion of Apple. Because Apple now has an official podcasts app for iPhone, iPod Touch, and iPad, or in other words, iOS. See, iOS is the operating system for Apple's mobile devices. That's anything with a bigger screen. Right now, that means iPhone, iPod Touch, and iPad. Maybe someday Apple TV would be one of these two. Who knows? We'll find out someday. So there's this new podcasts app for iOS. And there had been some rumors before of uh, they, they saw in the recent developer beta and preview of the newest version of iOS, version 6, which will come out in fall of 2012, some people have noticed that the podcast section was missing from the music app. The way it is a week ago, or and kind of right now, if you haven't downloaded the new app, the way it is a week ago is that your audio podcasts would be in your music app on an iOS device. Your video podcast would be under the videos app. And if you wanted to subscribe to a podcast on a mobile device, 
you had to get a different program like Downcast, Instacast, Pocket Cast, Blabbercast, whatever cast, <laughs> anything cast could probably let you subscribe to podcasts on your device. Or you could use a program like Stitcher and stream it then. You could download individual episodes before. You could search for podcasts. You could leave ratings and reviews for podcasts. You could leave ratings and reviews for podcasts. All of that stuff you could do before, but you couldn't subscribe. And you had to connect it to a PC with iTunes if you wanted to try and synchronize your playback position or remember any of this stuff or just be subscribed to a podcast. You'd have to connect it to iTunes on a computer, a Windows or a Macintosh computer. Now they've released the, the podcast app for iOS. And you can get this by going to the audacity to podcast.com slash podcasts app. And that will take you straight into iTunes where you can get this free app for iOS. And that will work on iPhone, iPod Touch, and iPad. And Apple sent an email to their podcast providers. If you have an Apple or if you have a podcast in the iTunes directory and your email address is associated with that podcast, which it should be, should be a current email address, you should have received this email, which this surprised me really that Apple sent out this email But they say, Dear Podcast Provider, podcasts on iTunes Store are now available through Podcasts app. The easiest way to discover, subscribe to, and play your favorite podcasts on your iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch. Features. Enjoy all of your audio and video podcasts in a single app. Explore hundreds of thousands of podcasts, including shows in over 40 languages. Try the innovative new Top Stations feature to find new podcast series in a variety of topics, including arts, business, comedy, music, news, sports, and more. Browse by audio or video podcasts, or see what's most popular in top charts. Tap subscribe for your favorites and automatically receive new episodes for free as they become available. Stream episodes or download to listen while offline. Sync your episode playback for seamless transition between devices. You can download podcasts app at, and then they gave their address, which I recommend go to the audacity to podcast.com slash podcasts app. If you type podcast or podcasts, I'll, it still redirects you to the right place. But this surprised me that Apple would send this out because in my opinion, the app is not ready. And not only did they email it out as an, a, a, this huge announcement to all of their podcast producers in the iTunes store, but they also highlight it in the iTunes app store for iOS apps. So they're telling people, download this app. This is what the app will do. It's amazing. It's incredible. Now, there are some great things about this app. I'll tell you some of the things that really stand out as fantastic things about this app. First of all, a standalone app brings a lot more attention to podcasts on Apple's mobile devices because now people can just pick up their phone or their iPad or their iPod Touch. They'll see the normal apps on there, music, books, iBooks, whatever, store, all of this stuff. And now they have a specific icon just for podcasts. That is fantastic that they'll have their own app, not buried somewhere inside of another app like even on my ipad with its really big screen if i want to get into the podcast that i've synchronized from itunes with my ipad even though i have this really big screen i have to go to the music app then click on the more button then click on podcasts then i see my podcast but it's only audio podcasts so having a dedicated app is fantastic for this And because of this huge announcement, really, this is bringing, and this is my other thing that's great about this, this is bringing a lot of attention back to podcasts again. So people are talking about the podcast app, and they're talking about podcasts, they're telling people, educating people about the term podcasts and what podcasts are. By the way, that term is here to stay, live with it. Uh, yes, podcasting as an art is changing and distribution methods are changing, but what iTunes downloads are technically by definition podcasts and they will never be anything else. They are podcasts. 
So it's gained a lot of attention, but also uh, I do think this could make subscribing to podcasts and consuming podcasts a lot easier for people. But that's if, 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 big if here, that's if the podcast app becomes a regular program that comes pre-installed on new iPhones, iPod Touches, and iPads, and if it comes with iOS version 6, which comes out in fall 2012. If the podcast app is not automatically installed for people, then there's, again, actually an even bigger barrier for entry, I think, if the podcast app is not already installed for people. So that will be a huge bummer. I really hope that they do have it automatically installed. I think they will. And if they do, then this could make subscribing and consuming podcasts a lot easier. But there's a caveat to this. And this is at least in the current version of the podcast app is it only works with podcasts that are in the iTunes podcast catalog. If you have... If you're subscribed to premium podcasts, it won't work. If there's a podcast you want to listen to that's not in the iTunes podcast catalog, you can't get to it from this app. So it's disappointing in that, but it does make sense because they're not trying to be the all-inclusive podcast app to replace anything out there for manual subscriptions, but they are trying to make a new app that will... Uh, give you a new way to interface with all of the podcasts already in the iTunes store. So I understand that. But I'm not so sure that's the way it'll stay. But continuing on with things that are great about this, iOS users can finally subscribe to podcasts on their mobile device. Because like I said before, they could only download individual episodes or they could synchronize with their iTunes a computer program and then they could be able to listen or watch podcasts but now they can do that right on their mobile device so this is fantastic for people who don't go to the computer as much or don't synchronize their mobile device with the computer as much they can just find your podcast click sub- subscribe or tap subscribe and they get it automatically on their mobile device and the podcast that people are subscribed to will automatically download over Wi-Fi or a data connection. And if someone doesn't want to download, if they don't want to wait for downloading, they can just click on the podcast episode title and it will start playing that podcast episode. In other words, it's streaming the podcast episode while it's playing. This is the same thing that Stitcher does, where Stitcher streams a podcast episode. It doesn't wait make you wait for it to download it streams it not live streaming this is something different this just streams it so that when you press play it starts playing your podcast right away and it's downloading it as it's playing it now that's depending on a data connection but if you don't have a data connection then it might have already automatically downloaded new episodes for you podcast cover art is also much more prominent on this app much bigger Uh, much prettier, uh, displayed in how they have a dark background around them and really nice, real strong feature and focus on those. Oddly, it's still not displaying at 1400 by 1400. Apple has also said that there would be synchronization across iOS devices and optionally back to iTunes. However, if you go to the audacitypodcast.com slash podcasts app and read the reviews that people have left in iTunes and just look around on blog posts and maybe even just try this yourself, chances are you will see this does not work at all. For I couldn't get it to work. Uh, in our chat room, Charlie had told me before the show that he got it to work, but then he said something else that... Uh, He said it has not synced and uh, I just hear lots of problems here and there. Some people have said, yeah, it was synchronized. It's great. It's odd. So they've got some bugs to work out, but this is something they've said it will do. It doesn't do 
but so you can assume that it's something they're going to fix. Just right now, it doesn't work. And for me, I sometimes listen to podcasts through my computer on iTunes. Sometimes I listen to podcasts on my iPad. Sometimes I listen to them on a little iPod Nano that does not have iOS. So being able to synchronize back to iTunes is very, very, very important to me. I do not have an iPhone. So that's why I don't just use an iPhone for playing my podcast. But the iPad is like a giant iPod to me sometimes. But other things that they do great with this is chapters inside of enhanced podcasts are now a lot easier to navigate. Before, what you might have seen are if it's an enhanced podcast where they've created chapter markings and they can have little links embedded or change the cover art at certain times, it's still audio, but they're displaying some things visually. This is now a lot more intelligent with the new podcast app, because instead of just marking little lines in the timeline for the episode, so if you have a one hour episode and it's split into two chapters, you have the first chapter is uh, 30 minutes, second chapter is 30 minutes, you'd have a line right in the middle where someone could press the next button and it would skip to that line or to the next chapter. That's now a lot smarter inside of the iOS app for podcasts that you can write below the playback position which is hidden. I'll mention that in a moment. But right below that, you have an option to display the time based on just the chapter you're on. So you can easily skip around inside of a chapter without accidentally jumping to another chapter. Or you can have it list all of the chapters. And these are two little buttons right next to each other, right underneath the playback progress bar. So it's it's really nice for jumping around and uh, chapter navigation. There's also a sleep mode here that can be set up for different ways based on either a time or it can stop playing anything when it furnishes the current episode. So this is great. So people can listen to podcasts as they fall asleep. And uh, if you know that you tend to fall asleep after 15 minutes, but you don't want to miss podcast episodes, but you want to fall asleep to listening to podcast episodes, this could be a great way to do it that you just set your sleep timer and it will turn off automatically after a certain amount of time or when the episode is finished. So you don't have to wake up and turn it off when you want to go to sleep. Also, the playback controls and skip buttons are a lot more intelligent. They're bigger. They're near the bottom of the screen instead of the music app puts them at the top of the screen, at least currently it does in iOS 5.1. And the buttons, uh, even the skip buttons, there's a 10 second skip back and a 30 second skip forward button. This is great, perfect for podcasts because so often in a podcast, you might hear them mention a link and you don't want to have to try and scroll back or scrub back in the audio. You just want to go back about 10 seconds and hear that link again or hear that phone number again or a name or a product name or anything like that. You can just do that. Now, you can also scrub all the way back however much you want to, but this quick little forward and backward works great. The 30 seconds forward is great because if there's a podcast that has a long ad, then this makes it really easy to skip through that ad, or maybe it's just a section or a song. Uh, You might be listening to a podcast that's about indie music, and there's a song they're playing 30 seconds of that you don't like that song, so you just press that little skip button and it jumps forward 30 seconds. I think this is really intelligent. 10 seconds back or 30 seconds forward works really well. And it's it. these buttons are bigger, they're easier to press, and especially much nicer on an iPad, which is what I'm using. Then also the episodes will play sequentially without stopping between them. I really like this because on iTunes desktop and on the music app on iOS, the way it would play podcasts is it would play episode five and stop. Then you'd have to go back and click or tap to press, tap to play episode six, and then it would stop. Then you have to go back and tap to play episode seven, and then it would stop. You just couldn't leave it playing. And many times when I'm trying to listen to podcasts, I just let them play through and don't want them to stop in between. So this is a way that now they can do that without stopping. So it will just play in the order that they are displayed. And that order can be switched to either oldest first or newest first. So that uh, they'll play sequentially and not stop between the tracks. 
And the last thing that I thought of as a great advantage of this is, like I've kind of already mentioned, your audio and video podcasts are now finally in the same app on iOS instead of being split up between two different apps. They're finally in the same place, which makes a lot of sense. What this does make me wonder is the podcasting specification says that PDFs and Apple now supports even eBooks or EPUB format can also be considered a podcast. So where does that fit in? I'm guessing that would go under the iBooks app, their ebook reader on iPad and iOS devices, but we'll see. Now, some of the things I don't like about the iOS podcast app. There's really a sad possibility. Now, it's just a possibility, but it's very likely that the podcast app might not be pre-installed on future OS devices, just like the iBook. Uh, app was not pre-installed on iOS devices, at least until now. This might change with iOS 6. Then again, iBooks is a little bit more niche than podcasts, maybe, or maybe it's the other way around. But there is that possibility that the podcast app won't be pre-installed. So that means that barrier to entry becomes higher since people would have to download and install an app on their iOS devices. And right now, the iTunes and device synchrony does not work as they've claimed and as they've promoted. Some people have gotten it to work. I cannot get it to work. I can't figure out how it should work. I have tried many different things like subscribing on the app and then seeing if that makes it synchronize positions with iTunes. That doesn't work. I've tried not subscribing. I tried this when I first loaded the app and it copied all my podcasts over. It's just not synchronizing and it's really annoying me. But I would assume they'll get this fixed. Just right now, doesn't work. There's this option in iOS apps that you can change the playback speed. You can slow something down to half speed or speed it up to double speed. And this is great for podcasts because I've found that I have started listening to a lot of podcasts at double speed. It allows me to consume a lot more information. It's not a matter of how slowly or quickly a person speaks. It's just how quickly... I listen or process information, and many other people do this too. And at first I thought, oh, what? how dare you do that to my audio? But now I totally understand because you get to consume twice as much content in the same amount of time or consume the same amount of content at twice at half the time. So this playback speed option is great. It's been in the music app before where podcasts were, and it would stick. So No matter what episode I was playing of what podcast, it would always stick at whatever speed I chose, which in my case would be uh, 2x, two times speed. On the new podcast app, it doesn't stick. Anytime I switch to a different episode, it resets the playback speed to just a level uh, standard audio. So it's, it's a bit odd that it won't remember that setting. And there's no way that I can change that globally to tell it every time I play, always play at two times speed. Maybe they'll fix this in the future. I hope they do, but it also seems like something they'll just let slide and not fix. And it gets really annoying because being able to play episodes sequentially without having to pause between them, but it does slow down. So every episode If I'm listening to, for example, uh, 10 five-minute episodes, they'll all play one right after the other. Yes, that's great. But if I want to listen to them at double speed, I have to go into the app every time a new episode starts and change the speed. That's really inconvenient. I really hate how they're doing that. Maybe they'll fix that. Another thing I don't get is podcast cover art still doesn't display at 1400 by 1400 pixels. This is something I talked about a few episodes ago when iTunes officially updated the specs and announced it to everyone. They said, podcast cover art is now recommended to be 1400 by 1400, which is a requirement if you're going to be featured anywhere in the store. So I have updated all but one of my podcasts to 1400 by 1400 cover art. But it doesn't, that number doesn't make sense. I've talked about that before. But the actual resolution images are displaying on the iPad is when you load a podcast, 
and start playing in your iPad or yeah, if you have a new iPad and a podcast is playing, then it will display at 1000 by 1000 pixels on the new iPad. If you have an older iPad, well, the resolution is half in both dimensions. So it will be 500 by 500 on an older iPad and it will be even smaller than on the iPhone and iPod touch. So still not 1400 by 1400, but yet, at least in iOS 5.1, when I lock my iPad and then turn it back on while a podcast is playing and the cover art displays, it's still displaying full screen, which is 1536 by 1536 on the new iPad. Again, I think they're going to change this in the next version of iOS 6. So for you, the takeaway is make sure your cover art is 1400 by 1400. It will look a lot better in these apps then. Uh, I also don't like how the playback position and time indication are buried underneath the cover art. When you load the podcast app, it displays the cover art and it displays the previous episode, next episode, back 10 seconds, forward 10 seconds, and play pause button and a couple other minor things, volume control. But it doesn't display the playback position. In order to get to that, you have to tap on or slide the cover art up. And then you get to the playback position, the playback speed, and a couple other things. I don't like how this is hidden. Additionally, episodes for a podcast are sorted by default, newest to oldest. So if someone goes and presses play, they'll hear your newest episode first, then go older, which I don't like that. You can change it, but you have to change it for every podcast you're subscribed to. You can't just change it globally and say every podcast should be sorted this way. Even on the little iPods, like the iPod Nano, I could press play on a podcast and it would play sequentially. But if I opened up that podcast, it would list the episodes newest to oldest. So it's kind of odd that they're doing that, but I guess they want to put more emphasis on the newer content. When you are subscribed to a podcast and you look through the episodes and you decide you don't want certain things, well, there's no way to remove episodes from your subscription, either episodes you've already downloaded or haven't downloaded yet. You can't hide them. You can't remove them in any way. That's annoying. They'll probably fix that, I hope. But you can do that on iTunes on the desktop. You can see faded out descriptions of the episodes you haven't downloaded yet. You can delete that. Or you can download the episode, but even after you've downloaded the episode, you can delete it right from within iTunes. The cover art for some, well, the the individual cover art per episode cover art does not display at all. So if you have a master cover art for your podcast that has the name of your podcast, it's what people see in the iTunes podcast catalog. That I would call that your podcast cover art. Then you have episode cover art. So maybe each episode is a picture about something that you're talking about or something relevant, whatever it may be. For example, the Daily Gizwiz show from twit.tv a while back, they probably still do this, but a while back, they would change the cover art for each episode to be a picture of the gadget that they're talking about. But the overall show had a completely different podcast cover art. So those individual per episode podcast cover arts do not display. When you're playing an episode, it displays the podcast cover art, the overarching podcast cover art. Also, speaking of not displaying, is the lyrics tag is completely missing. But I think that makes sense. And I really felt like the lyrics tag was completely unnecessary for podcast episodes because you could use the same information in either the description or the summary field. And that would be the best place to put it because that's a bit more standard for blogging and podcasting. And the lyrics tag was really meant to be for music lyrics. So that the lyrics tag doesn't display in the podcast app, I would say that's okay. Just put that information somewhere else. And uh, PowerPress will automatically put in your blog post description or summary into that tag for you. So that that works out great. Podcasts also are searchable only by either the podcast title or the episode title. 
despite Apple saying that the metadata would make your episodes more searchable and your podcast as a whole more searchable. They even in their specifications, they say, put certain keywords in here so you'll be more searchable. Uh Uh-uh, doesn't work. Uh, My friend Andy Traub has a podcast post, a video post about this over at his site, and I'll have a link to this in the show notes, but you can also go to andytraub.com to read that. It's his uh, post about what um, all up change all podcasters must make. And he suggests that podcasters put their real name in their episode or in their show titles. That way people can find your podcast by searching for your name. I don't really like that, but I did look at all of my podcasts and realized I didn't have my name in the keywords for a podcast. So I'm adding my name in the keywords. I'm going to wait a couple days, then search again to see if doing that makes my podcast show up by searching my name. But guess what? This is the way iTunes desktop works too, is it's pretty much searching just based on your episode titles and your podcast titles. So here's an example of how this worked out. When I search for Daniel J. Lewis, he only finds the episode titles of someone else's podcasts when they've titled an episode with my name. It doesn't find my podcast episodes that have my name in the description. Now, I've added my name in the keywords. We'll see how that goes. Here's another example. Noodle.mx Network is the author of all of my podcasts. So if you search Noodle.mx, though, you won't find all of my podcasts. You'll find two of them currently. And those two you only find because there's an episode within that podcast named noodle.mx, or it has that in the name of an episode of that podcast. So it's not searching these tags. And this is in desktop iTunes as well as the podcast app. So it's not new to podcast app. This is something that Apple needs to change. Maybe you could get around it by adding extra information in the title. I don't necessarily recommend putting your name in there, but I am trying this thing of adding my name to the keywords, and I'm going to wait a few days and see how that works and see if that fixes the problem. If so, I will post a blog post over at theaudacitypodcast.com to explain this a bit more and let you know uh, that it works or that it doesn't work. And then finally, iTunes is really proud of this thing they've added called Top Stations, which is a fancy, really big image way of browsing the top five or so podcasts. And these are the same top several podcasts in the podcast catalog through iTunes program on your desktop. And it's, it's extremely slow and very buggy with a lot of podcasts that the cover art isn't loading for a lot of podcasts. And it could be there's some way that people are linking to their podcast cover art that isn't working with the podcast app. Maybe there's some tiny little specification or something weird that they haven't told us about. And that's why these podcasters cover art aren't displaying. But I don't, I don't, I, the program shouldn't be that picky. And by the way, speaking of the top stations thing, you can still search and browse the podcast catalog from the app, which is great. And you can subscribe to things right in there. You can read and rate podcasts as well as leave written reviews over there. Uh, So that way people can promote your podcast and uh, encourage you in podcasting. And all of those ratings and reviews do help. Now, this, this also does go through the iTunes system. So if someone subscribes to your podcast through here, you get that little extra point on iTunes system, which increases your chances of being featured in some way or getting their attention in some way. Whereas programs like Instacast, Downcast, Upcast, Everywhere Cast, Herecast, Therecast, Everywhere Cast, Cast programs might not do that. In fact, they don't subscribe through iTunes. They might get the directory, but subscribing there probably doesn't help. I've got a couple links in the show notes for some other great conversations about the podcast app. My friend Cliff Ravenscraft has done an episode of Podcast Answer Man where he talked about uh, the podcast app and what he loves and doesn't like about it. You can get that over at podcastanswerman.com slash 266, or I have that link in the show notes 
over at theaudacitytopodcast.com slash 86. But also, the podcast today in podcasting is back. And I get to be a co-host on it, which is great. We've got on it Gary Leland, Rob Walsh, Dave Jackson, Ray Ortega, and myself on Today in Podcasting. In our return episode, we talked a lot about the iOS app for podcasts. So check that out. Again, I'll have links in the show notes over at theaudacitypodcast.com slash 86. Last thing I want to tell you about is if you'd like to learn podcasting, you listen to me and you are interested in learning how to podcast, I do offer consulting, but my availability there is limited sometimes. And my main service is really design work. And if you need something to design, let me know. But I highly recommend the podcasting A to Z workshop from my friend Cliff Ravenscraft from Podcast Answer Man. This is a huge workshop that goes on for about a month. You get lots of great training, group consulting calls, and a bunch of digital products, even the product that he and I produced together, Audacity 101. And all of these digital products alone are worth far more than the registration. Now, it is a little bit pricey, but it's really worth it, I think, if you want to know how to start podcasting sequentially and get some support from many other people, too. I highly recommend it. And if you use the code NOODLE when you register, that's N-O-O-D-L-E, you'll get to save $100 from the conference or from the registration cost there. So I highly recommend that. That's over at Podcasting A 2 Z. that's T-O-Z, Dot com and use the code NOODLE to save $100 off registration. And you can also get that link and everything else I've mentioned over at theaudacitytopodcast.com slash 86. I'd love to know what you think about the iOS app. In fact, that will be this week's podcasting poll is if you think it's good, if you think it needs more work or it's not as good as alternatives, or if you hate it, Please let me know in the poll over at theaudacitypodcast.com or get to it straight from the show notes. And please join me when I record this podcast live every Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time over at noodle.mx slash live. Also check out the other episodes over at theaudacitypodcast.com and learn more about Audacity and podcasting. And you can subscribe to the newsletter over there and receive some occasional podcasting or Audacity tips and tricks and more. Please follow me on twitter.com slash the ramen noodle. And if you have questions or feedback for future episodes, call 859-353-4332 or feedback at the audacity to podcast.com or you can send a voice message right from the audacity to podcast.com now that i've given you some of the guts and taught you some of the tools it's time for you to go podcast with passion organization and dialogue i'm daniel j lewis from the audacity to podcast.com thank you for listening The Audacity to Podcast is a proud member of the Noodle Mix Network. Find more of our podcasts on Once Upon a Time, the TV show, Clean Comedy, and, hey, podcast is coming back, are you just watching.com, over at noodle.mx. Check these all out as part of the Noodle Mix Network at noodle.mx. And the Audacity to Podcast is also a very proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. And they've got so many wonderful podcasts from wonderful people all about technology and so many different ways that you can learn about technology and tech news, programming news, IT news, things like this podcast, how to podcast, and so much more. Check it out at techpodcasts.com.